scratch. Okay. Oh, I know. We do have some new scratchers, but not too many. It's 9 p.m. for Abdallah. Thanks for coming. Ah, uh, kids who came in, in their own time zone. That makes sense. Uh oh. Okay, there you go. I don't know if y'all could hear it, but I can hear myself. So let me share your your poll result with that, and I'll have one more poll. So Eric, will you tell us who you are? Sure. Thanks, Colleen. <laughs> um. So yeah, I am Eric Rosenbaum. Uh, excited to be here for the Makey Makey Plus Scratch webinar today. I am a member of the Scratch team. I'm a product manager there, previously an engineer. And before that, I was involved with Scratch when I was a graduate student at MIT Media Lab at the Lifelong Kindergarten where Scratch was born. I actually joined the year um, that Scratch launched in 2007. So I've been involved for a long time. Um, and I did my dissertation there on explorations in musical tinkering. And that included writing about the Makey Makey Invention Kit that me and my friend Jay, who was also a graduate student there at the time, uh, invented together. Um, awesome. And so it's no coincidence that Makey Makey and Scratch work together like peanut butter and jelly because they were born in the same place. It's kind of it's kind of crazy too because I didn't really know about Scratch until I knew about Makey Makey. Like I learned about them all together and I think a lot of uh, educators have. I wish I could have that poll up actually. Um, but it's kind of interesting to realize that Scratch was around for five years before Makey Makey and that if 2007, I mean, you're getting, you're past the 10 year mark with Scratch. That's amazing. They're like yeah. at 15 years or something almost. Almost. Exciting yeah, times for Scratch were growing. Yeah, that is really exciting. All right. So almost half of our people have not used Makey Makey. So we, that's pretty interesting to see too. So hello, um, if you have not used Makey Makey, you probably haven't seen me. If you have, those three of you that say you're pros, I bet you, I bet you see me a few times. So uh, welcome back. Um, anyone who's new, I work for Makey Makey and I create the majority of our content and I make sure that um, I represent your voices and share what's going on in the community, um, on our blog and in social and through awesome webinars like this. So um, it's great to meet you. And how cool is it to, Eric, we have cool jobs, like kids, you could grow up and have jobs this cool where you get to work for a company like Makey Makey or Scratch. It's pretty awesome. We're so lucky to do, do this, this work that brings creative learning experiences to people around the world. Yeah, very awesome. Um, so really quick, we were going to introduce what Scratch is and Makey Makey. Oh, I think that's the session overview. That's like what we're doing. You're going to give a session overview. Oh, I was just answering right. a question on the chat. Okay, session <laughs> yeah. overview. Yes, I'm happy to, to do that. So um, yeah, we're going to give an intro to Scratch. Uh, we'll give an intro to Makey Makey and show how to set it up. Um, I see a question in the Q&A. What is Makey Makey? You'll find out momentarily. Um, and uh, then we'll go into some tips for making music with Scratch and combining it with Makey Makey to make your own musical instruments. And then we have what we call the prompt challenge, some prompts that will inspire creative projects. So you'll get a wide variety of creations um, with your kids or whoever you're working with. And I, and I think what you just said about creative learning is, is important. And that's why Eric and I are here is that we want to help educators help kids become more creative in their making and their, in their learning. And so that's, that's, that's one part of our job. Um, and just for P's and Q's on Zoom, please chat in the Zoom as much as you want and ask each other questions. If you have questions specifically for me and Eric, try to put them in the Q&A so that we can answer them all at one time and we don't get this derailed, right, Eric? I mean, we love to get derailed, <laughs> but also we're trying to like... We want to get to the prompt challenge because that's my favorite part of this whole thing. Try, try to make, okay, let's jump into it. Um, yeah. I'll quickly, I'm gonna share my screen here, just a second. Um, that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and head to Scratch and Eric's gonna show those of you who are new to Scratch a little bit more about it. And hey kids, have you been here? Okay, so you should be seeing my screen. This is- We do. The Scratch website. So Scratch is the world's largest 
online creative coding community for kids. It's free for everybody and every, everywhere and in over, I want to say over 70 languages now. And what it lets you do is create your own interactive art and games or tell your story or whatever you can imagine um, and use code to do it. So um, we're promoting some tutorials at the top of the page, imagine a world, make music, make a chase game. So those are just some entry points. Um, but we also feature projects by kids around the world. Here's one about a, actually I haven't seen this one about a, a woodpecker, that looks cool. Um, you can pilot a canal ship in this game, an interactive pond. So there's an amazing variety of things that kids make. Um, but how do they make stuff in Scratch? Well, um, we're gonna we're gonna dive into that right now. So I'll click the create button. Um, and please join along with us if you can, if you wanna, if you can double task with your Scratch window open. Yeah, feel free to follow along. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you click create, you get to the Scratch editor. Uh, and here you can see, um, well, there's a lot going on, but one thing is this tutorial window and it's got a little video in it. With Scratch, you can make your own stories. Oh, you should be hearing the sound from that. I can, yeah. Mm -hmm. so there's a little video that and introduces animations. the possibilities, stories, animations, start by grabbing a move block. and it shows a little bit about how to get started. To it. Click on a block to try it. Okay, well, I'm, there's more there, but I'm just gonna close that for now. You can always get back to the tutorials in that blue bar at the top. But like a kid, I like to find out how things work by poking at them, mm -hmm. uh, by tinkering. Okay, so let's just click on that. I can just click on this block that says move. Oh, you know, I'm gonna zoom in my scratch a little bit, make it easier to read on your screen, hopefully. So I'll just click on that block that says move. And you can, hopefully you can see the cat is moving to the right um, each time I click. There's this other block, turn, I'll zoom those in, click on that, cat's spinning around. Um, well, that's cool. I'm programming a cat, um, but what, I'll just throw that away. What if I don't want a cat? Well, I can delete it down here. I want to program something musical, right? So I click this button at the bottom, right? To choose a sprite. A sprite is in, in the Scratch world and a thing that we can program and animate and bring to life. So there's a lot of sprites here that we provide. Of course, you can draw your own or important image. Um, but I'm going to go to the music category and pick this microphone. It's one of my favorite sprites. Um, so now I have this microphone. Oh, go ahead, Colleen. I was just, I like the microphone sprite because it's kind of like all of the instrument sprites are, are a little bit of a, a magical secret, I feel like. Like they're, un, they're not as, well, you don't realize that when you put in the microphone, what you're going to get in the sound tab. And so like, if you put in a piano, what you get in the sound tab versus like, you know, putting in a, a person or a ball, like you get some really cool stuff with the musical instrument sprites. So I can like just experiment with these blocks to make the microphone go to a random position, make it jump around or glide to a random position. Um, but Okay, let's go straight to the sounds. There are these sound blocks. So I can click here to get to different categories. Wub, wub beatbox, let's click. Love that sound, like a kind of beatbox sound. Um, so now I have this start sound block. And our first little program here, we're gonna go right to interactivity. So let's do when the space key is pressed. So that's the key on my keyboard, space. So now instead of clicking on the block to make the sound, I can press my keyboard key, space. You know about Makey Makey, you probably know where that's headed. Um, but I can also add to my program here, let's see, um, I could make the microphone um, jump to a random position each time. Um, another thing that we could do is use the different costumes of the microphones. The microphone comes with, so I just clicked on the costumes tab at the top, it comes with two different images. So the second one has little sound waves coming out. I think I'm going to like just quickly remove those and make giant purple ones just to show it's easy to draw your own sprites or modify the existing ones. Now let's just try to fill that. I'll switch to the fill tool. Cool. And you can see it's changing right here on the, on the stage. Whoa. And then cool. there's this size input. I'm going to make that even bigger. Okay. So I got my purple sound goop shooting out of the microphone. I'll switch costumes back to the first one with none. So you could see that's how you start to animate things. Let's make that interactive. Well, there's a block 
to switch to a particular costume, A or B, so that switches. I love using this next costume block because each time I click it, it just changes to the next one. They cycle between them. So now each time I press space, that costume is switching each time. Um, let's do another sound. So if I click on the sounds tab, you can see I've got like the costumes, a whole list of sounds. So here's bass beatbox, pretty cool, um, clap beatbox sound, and then there's a bunch more. I love these. Um, did you do that or did Jay do that? I feel like that sounds like Jay or you, um, that one sound you just did. There are a variety. I personally love making mouth noises in general, including beatboxing. There's a variety of sources. Um, some of them we actually got from a incredible beatboxer named Butterscotch. She is a world champion level beatboxer. Um, yeah. She's the world person. champion level beatboxer. Butterscotch, look her up, incredible. Um, okay. So at the bottom left, <clears throat> there's this um, sounds menu. So I'll mm -hmm. click on that and you can see, wow, we have all these different sounds available in our sound library, including not just musical notes uh, and percussion sounds, whoa, but things like animal noises. <laughs> I love that. Um, and, uh, oh, I love that one too, tiny, tiny animal creature. Um, but also things like the wacky sounds, or cartoon sounds, very useful. Um, so let's, let's grab that bonk sound. So now that got added to my sound editor. And of course I can edit these sounds too. So I can select part of it if I wanna trim it. I can also make it faster. So that makes the pitch go up, Ooh. makes it shorter. Um, Whoa. And of course, there's an undo button in case you mess it up. Yeah. Um, so let's go back to our code. Now I'm going to add a second little program. So remember, we've got space key. What is that? Let's add a second key. How about um, up arrow? And I'll go back here to sound and say, let's start a different sound. How about wah? So we've got wub. And here's wah. Oh, it's not that different. Let's do it. Hey, Eric, if you're teaching kids about code and they've never used Scratch before, can you explain why there are different stacks? Like, I always like to talk about the hat block and, um, like, why are you making a win space key pressed and then a win up air? Why are they different stacks? Can you explain that a little bit? Sure. Um, one of the really beautiful things about Scratch is it can do many things at a time. So a single stack is a little program. You can just click on it to run it. And it does what's in the stack from top to bottom. But you can have multiple stacks that do different things at different times. In Scratch, they can even do different things at the same time. Um, and we'll get into that maybe a little bit more later. Um, yeah, I actually did that when I was copying your project. I have my space key. I have two different space key stacks. And I have reason for it. I'm going to talk about it when I show my Mickey Mickey. Oh, I'm curious about that. That sounds cool. Well, when you when you added your um, sound waves in the costume, you went really fast. And um, I can't remember who asked in chat, but can you just click back on costumes real quick and show how you did that? What you absolutely. did to make it look like that? So um, we Scratch has an incredible, so many cool features, but one of them is this um, costume editor or paint editor, as we call it. It lets you paint your own sprites. Um, so at the left, you can switch between the different costumes. So this is the, the plain microphone. And then the second one has the um, purple stuff that I added. And there's all these drawing tools here. So if I wanted to add some green stuff, I can change the color. Donk. Oh, but you could even just take the, the, you could make it all green right now, right? Like you'd use the bucket and so make that whole the, purple spot green. Here's the fill tool. Cool. You can fill that in. Oh, oh, nice. it's, a, it's a little better. We're, we're going to go with that. Yeah, um, that does look good. And of course, there's this button at the bottom left to paint a new costume or choose one from our library of costumes, or you can upload an image. It's very flexible. And we, yeah. we love to see how kids express themselves by making their own drawings um, or even recording their own sounds, which I didn't show. Um, 
Cool. Do you want to take over, Colleen? And oh yeah, I'm going to take over and show how Makey Makey works. And I'm going to stop your sharing and share my sharing. And and, and so we're yeah. gonna we're gonna do the intro to Makey Makey, and we'll be be back to scratch very soon as we. I'm gonna do it with both. Just really, I feel like oh yeah, I should do Makey Makey and then come back to this. So I am on this screen, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show you since there are some new people. I'll go really slow. Um, back to the beginning. Y'all can see my. Looks good. Okay, thank you. I don't know, I can't, I can't talk. I wanna make this big just so I can see it really well. So Makey Makey and Scratch, totally like peanut butter and jelly. And if you go to Scratch, there's an extension, um, which you can use or not use. Eric didn't use it, you don't have to use it, but I like the way that this tells you exactly what's happening. You're making anything into a key and not just a key, a computer key. Um, and someone did ask if Makey Makey works with iPads and thanks to the new iOS, they do, but you have to have a special adapter um, for it to work. And I forgot I was going to do this. Well, I'm going to talk about this because it does go with the other thing. So Makey Makey lets you turn anything into a key. And so what you need to do is start looking at the world as not what it is, if that makes sense. So um, this plant. It's not a plant. It is a musical instrument, right? So it could be a musical instrument because I could like take it in half and try to blow through here. Like, you know how you do that cool, cool musical grass thing. But also because of Makey Makey, I can turn this leaf into an instrument. And so I got that idea from um, Lindsay Balfour of Strawbees and I just, I just love it. So really quick, I'm gonna show this video. You are not gonna recognize Eric in this video. <laughs> the original Kickstarter video explaining what Mickey Mickey is because it's great. And I actually want to point out that there is something about this video that I really love that I think kids should notice. And that's how prototypey everything is because we are, like you said, we're about creative learning experiences. And I think that's really cool, right? So Mickey Mickey, you can, this is not a banana. It's a piano. This is not a Water bowl, it's a cat selfie space. So here's the, and you can hear it, right? I just had to make sure, is my sound on? We did not get the audio from that. Okay, so I will go back. Thanks, see, we have to have that, that audio because that is the best part. So here you go. <laughs> I'm Jay. And I'm Eric. We're graduate students at MIT Media Lab. We have a dream that everyone is an inventor. So we created Makey Makey to let you invent just by alligator clipping. Alligator clips stuff like bananas to your Makey Makey. When you touch the banana, your computer just thinks you're touching the keyboard. The front has arrow keys, spacebar, and mouse left click. When you're ready for more, flip the Makey Makey over and you've got more keyboard keys and support for the mouse. You can even use the board like an Arduino when you are ready. No programming, no breadboarding. You don't even have to install software. Just plug it in USB. Order your Makey Makey today and start changing how the world works. 
I just love that the sound, all the sounds, and you guys did all the sounds yourself in the video. Like it never gets old. I love watching it. If you wanted Thanks. to see that video again, let me just copy it. I meant to do this from here in the first place, so you wouldn't get, you wouldn't go, oh, Colleen, where's that video? Um, if you go to makeymakey.com, the Kickstarter video is right there on the homepage. Every time I share Makey Makey with students, I share it with this video first off. Um, and there's a plethora of resources here. This is what I was talking about, all those resources, but I'm not going to get into my eddy. I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to get in a swirling whirlpool. I just want to watch the video again. Um, so you can turn anything into a key. It acts like your keyboard. All right. So that's why it looks like a Nintendo controller and it has an up arrow and a left arrow. So when I do this, Right, I'm actually changing my slides right now with the Makey Makey. So I'm sorry, I'm going back and forth. Um, but I, I'm able to control my computer with bananas and plants and maybe my hat. My challenge today is to find a way to make a musical instrument out of my hat. So when you plug in your, your Makey Makey to your computer, it sees the Makey Makey as an external keyboard. The computer just thinks, ah, I've got a new keyboard plugged in. So your computer doesn't know you're playing, you're controlling it with bananas. It would probably be upset if it found out. Um, but you don't have to have any special software because it thinks it's a keyboard. That's all it is. So you, the important part for all of you who are new, and I think this is the part that some of us in our capacitive world, we get lost because on our phones, we just need the one finger. But when you're using Makey Makey, you have to have two connections to come together to complete a circuit for you to make something happen. So the easiest way to do that is to hold earth. So on the bottom row here I'm, is my earth inputs. And you can think of earth as the ground, right? Like if you're using a battery, you have a positive and a ground. So you can think of that like that. And then all of these inputs that are silver here are positive input inputs that will control my computer. Um, so let me go ahead and see which way do I wanna go this way. Yeah, all right, good. So each key on my computer is actually a switch that allows me to, um, if I press this arrow, is the same as pressing the arrow on my computer. I'm pressing a key and I'm uh, using a switch and that switch is opening and closing a circuit. So when my computer key is not being pressed, it's open. And when I press my keyboard down, then I'm closing the switch. And so you can create all of your own magical makey makey creations by creating your own switch. And actually, oh, come on slides, my hands are dry. So wait, was that the end of the slides that I did? Oh, good, oh no, it wasn't, I thought it couldn't be. So there are a couple of different ways to do it, but I'm not gonna get into all of them. I don't wanna get, I don't wanna overwhelm you. So I'm gonna go to scratch and I'm gonna show exactly how it works. And I'm gonna switch to my other keyboard camera because um, Chris Coley from Canada said, he really loves it when we use the document camera to show these things. So I'm gonna have my makey makey right here. And I have made a project similar to Eric's and I did two stacks. And I did the next costume with my start sound, but I also did it so that I, did, I thought it was fun the way you did the change size. So I'm gonna make my microphone like grow when I press space. So I can hold earth and press space. Oh, but I have to focus my computer on the right thing, so. All right, so when I press space, that happens. And also, when I complete a circuit on Makey Makey, the light lights up. Can y'all tell the light is lighting up? Can you see it, Eric, or do I have to hold it closer? Um, I can see it okay, but I wanna make okay. sure people uh, viewing the webinar can see the video of your Makey Makey on the desk with the leaves there. Yes, we got a yes. Let me awesome. spotlight it and um, that'll work. And then I can see it. Oops. Oh, and then Colleen, if you don't mind um, zooming yeah. in the blocks a little bit, um, that's yeah. Let me zoom the blocks. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> let me just really zoom them. All right. So there we go. That's too big. So zoomed. I mean, that's so good. zoomed. All right. So now I'm pressing space, <laughs> and that is allowing me to do that. So it works right away with um, Scratch, and you know, Eric, I think we were gonna go back to you just here in a second, but what, what I think is important for everyone to see, and actually, I know I'm flipping around a lot, so I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm off my game today. But if you were on our page and you had never used Scratch and you're a little worried about going straight to Scratch, we do have a nice stepping stone in our apps. So if you click on 
our apps. You have all these great um, apps here and I'm gonna go to the piano app. So can you see the piano app? Cause sometimes what happens Eric is I've done something weird and you're only seeing one tab. Happens to me all the time, but yes, I see it. <laughs> Looks good. Okay, good. All right, so this is another way to test your making making. I'm holding earth and now I have a piano app which is modeled on scratch and I can play the piano. Um, and even what's also fun is I can change the amount of keys I have here and I can also change my instruments here so I can make my piano a guitar. And I can change the pitch. Um, so that's the piano app, which is another musical instrument. And Eric, I'm going to show one other one other app before we before I delve us right back into script, just because I really love the sampler and music. So um, this is another way you can play music with Makey Makey. It's this sampler. If anyone has experience with with music, and you can change your sounds here. Oh, hi Sarah. Your students like it. We just had the sampler come out in May. Oh, I was already on Fraser's. You'll like the lo-fi hip hop one. Super chill. This is the one I use when um, I want a teacher to like Makey Makey because the sounds are so soothing. And right, of course so. we could make something a lot like that, but program it ourselves in Scratch. Yeah. This is a great starting point before you to jump me, into Scratch. Yeah, what I like to do with this is this is the, here's a really cool way to do it. And now when I'm ready to learn to code my own app, so you can teach your kids make a sketch, like an Etch-a-Sketch, or they can they can do the Etch-a-Sketch app, and then you can teach them how to make it over in Scratch, with, which I think is really amazing. All right, so in Scratch, now that I have this, I need to actually start connecting fun things, but first, I think you should tell us a little more about adding more sounds. I'm gonna let you take the screen back. Sure, um, I just saw a question. Do I need any special extension to use Makey Makey with Scratch? You don't need All any right. other software. Um, right. We have inside the Scratch editor, there is a Makey Makey extension you can use it with or without that. Um, so let me jump into screen sharing. Um, yeah, so the the purpose of just for any teachers who want to look at the extension, the thing that I like about it is that um, if kids, oh, sorry, trying to fix my video back to me. Uh, if kids have have trouble, like they they don't know what keys to use, the extension will only put keys that work with Mickey Mickey out of the box. So we'll, we'll show that a little bit later. Yeah. Um, just want to stay on track here. Yeah. So um, I'm going to um, add another sprite here. Just foreshadow. I don't know if you can see my camera that has a fish here, but I'm going to bring in the fish later. But I'm going to add a, a virtual fish. I can just search the sprite library for fish. Hey, there's a fish. Now I've got a fish. I'm going to um, delete my microphone. I'm going to make that fish a little bigger. Just type 200 in there. Um, so now let's see if the fish has sounds that it comes with. Oh, it's got some bubbles. Um, that's not a very good Mickey Mickey sound. It's kind of ambient in the wave. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to record my own fish sound. Okay. We haven't shown that yet. So down at the bottom, there's this record option. So if I click on that, now I've got a sound recorder. All right, let's see. I've got to get into the fish mindset. Okay, I'm ready. Fish. I think just, you know, identifying myself as a fish for the purposes of this sprite. So I'll, I'll, I just move the trimmers around so I can remove the silence from the beginning. I'll click play. Fish. Fish. That's fish. So now if I save that, I can label that sound, give it a name, fish. And then I feel like the fish voice is a little higher pitched, so I'll go fast. Fish. That sounds Ooh. good. So now in my code, I can say, when the space key is pressed, start sound fish. I'll test that out. Fish, 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 fish. Cool. Um, let's add an, another sound. And this time I'm gonna use, just showing different sound features, the surprise feature. So we have a whole library of sounds to try. This just picks a random one for you if you're not sure what to pick. Oh, okay. So fish might be a little confused, could be a bird. Let's get another one. 
laughter. I'm just gonna like make that shorter because I like using short sounds with Nikki Nikki. So <laughs> just a tiny quick laugh. All right, I'm gonna remove these other ones by clicking the little X. Okay, so now I'll show you um, a, a trick, which is playing a random sound. So each time I press space, fish. instead of just the fish, I can use this pick random block. Okay, so what does that do? You try scratch blocks by clicking on them. So if I click pick random, it spits out a random number. So I put one to 10 in, or it has one to 10 in there and it's giving me a random number, seven, 10, seven, four. And so if I drop that in to the start sound block, like so, now it picks a random sound by number. So now when I press the space key, fish, 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 I get a different sound each time. All right, let's um, go to, oh, and then I'll also, um, I'm gonna do a little animation here. I'll make the fish um, get bigger, change size by 10. So each time I click that, it gets bigger. And then go back to the normal size. Um, or actually, we'll go back to size 200. And the problem with that, I'm gonna show you, you can't even see it change size at all. Why is that? Scratch does everything from top to bottom. But when it happens real fast like that, you don't see the animation. So I'm gonna to go to the control blocks where there's this weight block. So if I click on that, you should be able to see it highlight for a second. It's glowing yellow while it's waiting. So if I put that in there now, you can see the fish gets bigger and then plays the sound and then it waits and then it goes back to its original size. So I'm gonna make it change more, change by 50 and I'll make it change, wait only 0.1 second. Let's try that. Fish. Cool, so now my fish is kind of pulsing. Let's go back to using the Makey Makey. So uh, I'm gonna make an interactive fish. Um, Oh, but Colleen was gonna show the part with the alligator clips. Maybe I'll, I'll switch over to you. How's that sound? Oh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm answering some questions here about Google CS first. So um, well, I'm gonna just mention it because we're because I started talking about it because people asked if they needed to sign in to save projects. So right now, Eric is not signed in and every project he's making is not gonna be saved. You do have to sign in to save or you can download it. Yeah, file saved to your computer. So you can save it to your computer and then we upload it if you don't want to have students make accounts. Um, but I was just mentioning that there is Scratch now inside of CS First, inside of Google CS First. Um, the extensions aren't there, but the uh, but all the coding, almost all the coding blocks are there, right? It's basically the same, yeah. And so yeah. you can use the Makey Makey with this key pressed block and that works great with CS First, Scratch for CS First as well, yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So. Great, now I will go back to my project and share my screen again. But I did put in the um, in the window, Christine Dixon, one of our um, awesome Mickey Mickey teachers. Uh, she did a project for a new project November where they used Scratch and CS First and Mickey Mickey, so it just works. So because Mickey Mickey is like a keyboard, it just works like <laughs> all the time. So if you could code it in Python, like if I knew Python coding, Right, I could totally um, make a project with Scratch and not Scratch. <laughs> I can't double task, I shouldn't try. All right, so if you are seeing my space key again, right, for my beat, beat box, and actually, Eric, I forgot, I wanted to put that, that one you did. So I'm gonna have another key press, and I'm gonna do when up arrow pressed and I wanna do the random sounds. So I'm gonna put in boop, 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 start sound. So you can do start sound or play sound. And the difference, I, I always just encourage people to try them both to see what they prefer. Where was random and operators? And, and yep. And one way to explain the difference is that play sound until done, mm -hmm. waits until the whole sound is finished before moving down to the next block in the stack. And so a simple way to do animations, like what I was showing is if you do like change the size and then play sound until done and then change the size again, then mm -hmm. you get that whole animation. And the reason I did it a little differently is so that they're not 
Um, so you could have a longer sound and still have the animation be quick. Yeah. Scratch is very flexible, but takes a while to, as Colleen said, you might want to just try each one and see, see what works for you. I had an LED sitting here before we started, and now I don't. Oh, there's an LED. Well, I was going to try to explain this like a circuit, but just the way um, I press here, right, and an LED lights up, I can extend my keys. Um, and I'm going to use some materials from one of our new booster kits. We have these crafted code booster kits. That's my goal today is to use our conductive thread from that with my hat to make a musical instrument. But before I get really complicated, I'm going to go really easy. So I'm going to plug in um, one alligator clip. Let me get my, my cutting board out. I have this nice white cutting board. Oh, let's use this, my iris here. So this has moisture and it should work. And I'm going to do something weird. I'm going to test it by touching earth. Oh, Eric, I don't think it's going to work. It's not enough moisture. I'm so sad. All right, well, we might, that's okay. We, uh, are people yeah. seeing your camera Oh, I have, to, I have to um, spotlight. Thank you. Replace spotlight. There you go. Sorry, everybody. Should be. Now they can see it. All right, so I've got an alligator clip to this lime, and I'm going to hold earth and press the space key. Bye. <laughs> All right, so that works, but I need to have two connections and I don't necessarily wanna to have to hold earth all day. So I'm gonna take this gray alligator clip here and I'm going to connect another, a second line. Whoa, here we go. Now, when the limes touch, <laughs> I'm having a day. So I can touch both lines. I can make the lines touch this way. Um, and this is actually what I wanted to, to share before I go too much further are the different types of connections. So I can do human to human. I don't have a second person here, um, but I can, uh, I could put one alligator clip to my watch. And I could put another one to maybe my hat. I could try something there. So I could do skin to skin. So if there was someone besides me here, I could have two hands touching. I could also have my hand holding the earth. And so then, there we go. Hands holding earth. Woo. Sorry, I gotta get back to my scratch project. So my hand holds earth and I touch. <laughs> Or I could have a tool held in my hand. So that's what I was gonna do with my iris leaf. I'm gonna try one more time. It's gonna make this work. Sometimes it works. It's not, it does not have enough moisture, but I could use my metal you ruler. Use if you had something metal like a, yeah, yeah metal about, ruler, sure. So I've got my metal ruler Just now. Aluminum foil would work. Oh yeah, foil. I have foil sitting here too. So I could do that. Let's do let's do foil because it's right here. And this is kind of fun because what I could do, because Eric, I'm seeing a piano form in my brain. Oh dear. Is I could do because I didn't do my I'm gonna do my special beatbox. I could do it like this. If I had little kids, sometimes something like this where there's an earth. <laughs> that's really obvious. So now I've got my earth here and I can touch this. And every time I touch the line, I think I made dogs bark in my neighborhood with that. All right, so I'm, I'm holding earth here and that's kind of like my second tool. And the other idea, whoa, we went fast, was making a simple switch or using a bridge. So using a bridge, between the two contacts, and I actually have something pretty cool to share for that. So I brought this over. All right. So I could see if I can make a, a sound with it. Hang on. I got to see what how much you guys can see. So I'm going to do really quick one alligator clip right here on this uh, weird piece of cardboard. 
that looks like a marble ramp to me. And I can just clip that on the alligator clip. Alligator clips are finicky when you're um, doing live demos. Right, Eric? Always. <laughs> Take your time, Colleen. You're doing great. Yeah. And this is in our crafting code kit, this foil, which is kind of might feel silly, but it's just one of those items like foil is like the best thing ever. I'm going to make a lime. I'm going to make the lime roll down to connect the two things. What do you think? This is going to make the Ooh. music. Okay. I want to make sure I'm clicked on the right thing. Go lime. Whoa. Okay, that was fun. That was actually a really fun musical instrument. Well, so now you're kind of tossing the lime to disconnect yeah. and then reconnect. Yeah. Because a start sound. Oh, and then I could do this. Oh, you can't see me. Let now me I'm noticing. Hear my... Yeah. You're getting a lot of sounds. It's a little chaotic, but um, we love that. I wanted you to see me because I'm dancing while I'm doing it. So let me see if I can move this and not like destroy the, the whole thing. Oh, the lime, the lime on the coconut, y'all. Okay, there it is. Here we go. Just because it's really funny, but like this is a fun musical instrument that I did not know I was going to make today. You improvised it. That's amazing. Yeah, because this is not a marble run. This is a put a lime in the coconut musical instrument. <laughs> sorry, that's a lot of noise, but you can dance and make it move. So I'm sorry, I got a little over. I got excited, but that is a crazy way to connect some things really quickly to um, to an object. So I did one to earth on this foil thing just because I went a little fast. I'll show you again. So the gray clip is earth, and I always do gray for ground. Um, it's just like a, I don't know. So I don't really know that much about electronics other than what I've taught myself, but I like gray for ground. If you like put in a battery, you know how there's always a black one and a red one. So I like that. Um, the color of the alligator clips don't actually matter. They're all just conductive. So that's what does it. Um, and then I have this green one to the second one for up and then I'm bridging the two connections by <laughs> pressing here. If I had done, I'll, say, I'll give everybody the slides. I can, I can share those, don't worry. Um, if I had put play sound until done, would it not keep playing? It wouldn't be as chaotic? Should we try it? Um, sure. Just really quick. It won't take but like two seconds. It'll Let's just, just see if it's less. It will prevent another not. sound from starting while one is playing. And so it right. might be that you trigger it twice and the first time it works and the second time it doesn't because there's a, a sound already right. playing. So it might seem a little bit broken. <laughs> ah. and you've got, that's, that's interesting because you've got relatively short sounds. So they'll trigger one after the other if you hold it down. Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty nice. Well, that was fun. I, I didn't mean to, to make a, um, a lime. <laughs> A lot thing I think I also skipped ahead to, to the two different types, but we're, we're running out of time. So it's kind of okay, but I did that. So uh, if we, if we did, um, we have two keynotes, we can do more than four. We didn't show everyone the extension. So let me show them real quick um, where that is just so they can see what it looks like. Um, and these, this is what you lose when you go to Google CS first, you don't have all the fun extensions, um, but I, I would highly recommend coming in later and looking at music and text-to-speech along with Makey Makey because those are really fun. So you can see here now I just have a branded win key press and I have the options of only up, down, left, right, and then W, A, S, D, F, G. Whereas here I have all the keys I can use. Um, and for those of you that are new to Makey Makey, I'm gonna unplug it so I can show it to you again. Um, I can, Use all these key presses on the front. And if you remember in the Kickstarter video in the back, there's WASDFG. Eric, I just, this is the first time I noticed on the Kickstarter, you also had H. We, we, we made some design changes. Yeah, on the prototype, then, yes. you had H. 
Um, I also like the design change of not using hot glue. At all. That's another story. I love the hot glue. It's like my favorite thing. Uh, but you can actually remap these on our webpage. In fact, that's one of our most popular things for people love to do that is change these to different keys. If maybe you're using an app where you can't change um, the key press the way you would in Scratch and Scratch, it doesn't matter. But also, you know, Eric, this is complicated, but you could get a second Makey Makey and this one could have totally different key presses and then I could do even so, more fun. So many possibilities. I'd love to get back to um, yeah. sharing some more Scratch details because I think Let's there's a lot of things we haven't shown yet. And I noticed that we've only played beatbox sound. We don't want to give the impression that that's all you can do. <laughs> oh, right. And so. we want to do the, um, the pitch effects and stuff. Yes, I would love to just show a few more things. Okay, go ahead. Um, thank you. Um, but we've shown a lot already, so. Yeah. Um, oh, is, I guess I could plug awesome. a second Makey Makey in. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that working. Could you please, um, I don't know what it looks like when you spotlight my oh, yeah, let me spotlight second you. camera, but hopefully you're seeing my Makey Makey now. Not yet, just one second. Let me okay. fix it. Sci, um, oh. Well, this whole time I was not making everyone see your view. Yeah, you can plug in more Makey Makeys because they'll plug into multiple ports. Sorry, Eric, I lost your face. Where'd you go? There you are. All right, here we go. I'm going to spotlight your camera there. There you go. So you should now be seeing see my your Makey Makey. And my actual fish. That's mm -hmm. it cat toy I borrowed for my cats. But now I'll just show again what, what Colleen showed of using the fingers. So I bridge from earth there to the space <laughs> on, on the Makey Makey and you, you should see it light up there. Fish. And hopefully you're hearing the sounds from scratch as fish. well and seeing my scratch project. So we're getting some random fish sounds each time. So let's just try plugging in an alligator clip to earth. And then that's the orange one and the yellow one to space. And now I should be able to just touch the ends of those together. Fish. That also triggers it. So let's make an interactive fish. So I've got this, um, I love this aluminum tape. You could just use aluminum foil, but I just love this stuff because it's conductive and easy. Mm -hmm. You can transform any object in the world into, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's an animatronic fish. It woke up for a second into a musical instrument or other um, Makey Makey interactive thing into a key using Makey Makey with this tape. So I just got my alligator clip stuck on the tape there. Hopefully, hopefully you can see that, the, the foil tape. And now I'll just hold the metal part of this clip with one hand. And now I should be able to just touch the fish on my little foil here. Fish, fish. To get the sounds from it. Um, and so you can imagine doing um, additional inputs that way too, of course. So let's, let's plug in the up arrow to this green one. I happen to have a, um, a fork right here. Um, so I believe these forks are conductive. I haven't tested that yet before, but now I'll just connect that with the alligator clip. Whoops, it came off. Let's try up here. And now I can touch, say, the clip right to it. And that triggers the up arrow. Oh, but my program doesn't have the up arrow. This is a, a, a cat toy fish. I saw somebody asked about that. It is not a real fish. It's realistic though. So now let's make an up arrow stack and let's get, um, what, what sound is a fork gonna make? Let's get a musical note, say. So I'll go to my sounds tab, choose a sound, go to notes and electric guitar. Okay, cool. So now I'll do start sound electric guitar. So let me test that out. So I need to just, again, hold the ground, the earth in my fingers and touch the fork. Cool. So I've got an electric guitar sounding fork. I wanna introduce this block. It's a little lesser known, but really fun. Change pitch effect by 10. So the pitch effect actually changes the pitch of the sound. So each time I press it, it's going up and up and up and up. And so if, for example, instead I did the fish sounds, so that's the word fish, and I can reset it by clicking stop. Now, each time I press it, fish, 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 It's saying fish, but going up and up and up. So that's another expressive way to transform the sound. You can imagine 
making the sound go down instead of up or to random pitches or using that to make the same um, musical instrument sound like the guitar sound play different notes with different keys. There's tons of possibilities. You can of course make a whole piano uh, in that way. Um, let's see, just looking if there's more questions to answer. Um, yeah, there's probably a lot, but but I I think we should. Um, I've been I've been doing some crazy stuff over here trying to figure out how I'm gonna make my hat conductive. Oh, you want to you want to take over? Hey, nice hat! Look at that. Hi, thanks. It's my meow wolf hat, but it, it's really hard to wear a hat with your beats on. So I want to make my hat conductive, but I also like kind of <laughs> want to have to tilt my head. Oh, that's so a super like, interesting idea. I'm trying to figure it out, but I also have to connect. I think what I want to do is connect this alligator clip. I'm going to get a little stuck with this one, but I'm going to connect this alligator clip to Earth. Do I look silly? I love it. And then I'm going to, I think if I really wanted to, what I could do is, I don't really have enough time for this, but I wanted to get wacky because I want us to talk about our prompts too, because those were like the gold of the, the thing. I think what I could do is connect this thread and have this hang down. And then I could tilt my head and I, that binder clip could hit my face. That's my, <laughs> I don't have enough time, but We're I wanted to get wacky. Live. I know. I wanted, we're doing it live. I wanted to get wacky. I wanted to talk about the prompts because I thought the pitch was cool. And then I did the same thing, Eric, but I did, um, I just, like you said, I wanted to use a different, um, blah, blah, blah. what do you call it? A different Sprite. So I added the banana Sprite, of course. And I thought, what if I, and I did a surprise sound. And then I, this is where I was thinking I was going to try to make the sound happen with my hat. But for now, I'm just going to do it like oh. this. And the pitch effect is going up. Eric, if I do negative 10, will it go down? It sure will. Let's give it a try. Ooh. You can maybe even make it a bigger number, make it go down oh, more yeah. faster. Try Let's negative. Let's do like 40. Yeah. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> that is a, a wheezing horse. <laughs> oh, poor horsey. Um, I want to answer the questions, but I also want to show the prompts because I think they're really important. So like getting really wacky and weird, like what I just did, doesn't come naturally to everyone. And so these are some great prompts that Eric has um, shared with us. And I'm going to make sure the slides are viewable for everyone and send them to you when we're done. But you can, these are some prompts for making, I think would be great for Hour of Code. Um, how can you make a hands-free? So. Would you, con Eric, would you consider the Lime project I just did a hands-free project? I still had to use my hands, but I didn't use my hands to complete the circuit. Good question. I mean, the prompts are really just starting points to try to suggest wow. whole new directions. So I know, if but as you hands-free means tossing a lime in the air, then that's great. You could also imagine taking hands-free in the direction of, oh, what's a game controller, but you play by well, pressing your nose into a piece of Play-Doh or Rider. the hat Rider is a hands hat. one for sure by tipping it different yeah. directions. And that yeah. leads into the whole set of ideas around assistive technology, which is a really exciting way that people use Makey Makey for people oh, with yeah. physical disabilities. And, and like we said on the floor, um, on the floor is a really cool one. And I'm, I'm bringing it back to what you just said about assistive tech. What, this is a huge one. I should have got my smaller one, but I have this hula hoop controller I built um, oh, from nice. Katie Bootsu. But she did make me live play this on the floor with my feet. So again, this is just hooked to Makey Makey. Um, and actually on this one, you hold, you have earth with our, um, in our get up and go thing, there's one of these black Velcro bracelets. So you put earth to your wrist and then you can touch up, down, left and right this way. But if you put it on the floor, you can use your feet. I don't have to do my sock here, your feet to connect to up, down, left, right. And that is a way we're seeing a lot of great stuff with assistive tech. So I'll share that one. What would a slow one be? I actually think my Lime one might've answered that slow one. It wouldn't have been fast. What, yeah. what are some, yeah. And um, what could a poetic project be? Well, you could imagine an interactive poem on a page where the written words you can touch to trigger <sighs> sounds. 
Or is my screen still sharing? You, I have the best yeah. idea. Oh, what's We're your idea? This. We're almost out my of time. idea is to record a sound really quick and do this and to make it poetic. I'm going to do, oh my gosh, scratch. And then we have to answer all the questions. This one, uh, ready? Allow. So you might have to allow. Slow. This is what I'm going to do. I'm making a, a poetic one really fast. And then my pitch effect, where'd it go? Did I delete it? Okay. Well, I do want it to play until done, and then I'm going to change the pitch effect. And so now, with my makey makey, again, did I do down arrow? Slow. Slow. Oh, it's going up. I have to do my negative two. <laughs> oh, I. That's a beautiful idea. Yeah, I'm recording the slow idea and then. Slow. Slow. And so maybe I'll take, um, I don't know if I can get as creative. I think my lime, my weird lime project is like, I can't think of anything weirder than that. So we have a lime. Well, you get the idea. We could also do it in the chair. Oh, I could sit on it. Then I can have a poetic thing. I could sit on the line. You can combine prompts. The possibilities are endless here. And I love using these because kids take, or people in general, take these prompts in, in directions that um, you might not have thought of. And it's a way to, to get people to things that are surprising and new and different from each other. Um, I love seeing people make yeah. things on their heads, like the, like Colleen's hat. But you could make a Mickey Mickey interface that makes music when you dance um, with a floor mat or even by attaching things to people's bodies it's really fun to use water with it um somebody asked on the on the chat is the electrical electrical conductivity safe for children it is 100 percent safe yes it's like uh, using um on our uh, we have an faq on it on our web page mm -hmm. uh, but it's um it's like using batteries or using a phone i mean you just you don't really have to be worried about it you can um it's also eric i'm not good at this, describing this but it's not it's there. You're not really dealing with any electrical current. If you submerged your makey makey in water, Don't you're do that. just ruining your makey makey. I'm just saying you're ruining your makey makey, but you're not, you're not going to have like uh, I mean, you wouldn't want to do that when you're connected to a computer because you wouldn't do that with your keyboard or your phone or any That's of those true. things. But so use, use when care you, when using it with water. That's true. But you can use makey makey with a glass of water, which, ah, that's what I should have done when I was trying to do a human interaction. So I could put, this alligator clip down in here, and then I could hold earth and I could drink it and it could say slow. it would be perfect, right? I'm gonna have to do that later. All right, I think we better wrap up, Colleen. That was a lot of fun. Thank you so it much. It was, you don't wanna answer these last, I like to give people the, the couple minutes of the questions because people are still asking. So I put in the chat, the adapter for the iPad. Um, I really like Abdallah's question. We never got to it. Can you make a specific code that does something that's not like a typical keyboard key. I don't really know how I would answer that. But, and I think that what we showed with the prompts and like using it as something that's not a keyboard key is really where you get magical, would you say? There's a lot of possibilities there, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And then um, if people had troubleshooting, we actually on our YouTube videos have like a nice way to troubleshoot, but always email support at joylabs.com and we'll see what we can do with you. And Scratch can be run offline if you download Scratch. I think that's an important one to act, to answer. Just go to the and Scratch downloads page. We have it for many different um, operating systems and devices. Yeah, and um, the apps are on our Makey Makey page. Also, if you go to the search bar, someone's asking about Microbitten Makey Makey. We've done some webinars with them and we have done projects with those. If you type in in the search, the little magnifying thing, microbit, you'll find some projects there. And you can plug in more Makey Makeys. You can change the keys that those are known as, and we will send everything to you. Um, and everything that you haven't been able to answer, we'll try to answer on makeymakey.com slash blog. Um, and Scratch will probably share out those things too. And I think I answered everything. <laughs> And then there's one more about, uh, about Lego, so about, a little bit less related to what we're talking about today, but you can feel free if you have specific questions to use the contact us link on the Scratch website to yeah. get um, support for that. Um, and when you do put those extensions together, you can use all the things together. You can use Makey Makey and Microbit and Lego all together at one time. If you really yeah, you can connect all those different things to one computer running Scratch and 
communicate with them all. It's really fun to do that if yeah. you have them. And, and just because I don't have time to find the link again, someone asked me that same thing about the iPad adapter. There's the magnifying glass. I write all our blog posts and I have a ton of information um, on our site and you can find almost all of it by clicking adapter. And oh my gosh, we have to put the assistive technology link. Actually, if you go to blog, I'm pretty sure, there you go. The second post there is assistive tech. We've done a lot of work around assistive tech and we meant to talk about that more today, but there's so much when you put scratch and makey makey together. So thank you, Eric. Thank you, Colleen. So this was so much fun. Thanks everybody yeah, for joining. So much fun. Um, sorry, sorry, we're long-winded and we just want to talk about makey makey and scratch all day. But I, I think we better wrap it up there. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Bye folks. Have fun with your hour of code and beyond. My fish says goodbye. Your fish says goodbye. My hat says goodbye. <laughs> love it. I love that I can still see your fish and your second camera. Oh yeah, second camera. Yeah. Fish cam. And fish cam, oh, I love it. And Susie, we'll put the slides on the blog post. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, JC, for coming. Thanks, everybody. All right. Yeah. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> that was a good recording stopped face, Colleen. <laughs> uh, I like to do that. Oh, I